Hi, this is Clark Griswold, and I'm glad you could join me today in the family truckster as we go around looking for the Wally world of large fine cars. We're in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, a, a market that I see is one where we can find cars that are kind of young collector cars, not from the 30s or 40s or 50s, but maybe the 70s, and the 80s. And so we're on our way to Jim Downing's shop right now. Jim Downing is a renowned IMSA driver and uh, a guy that recognized the, the potential for rotary powered race cars early on and spent his whole career driving them. And so we're on our way to his shop right now. We hear that he's got a few lying around. Out into the, uh, this is 8.30 in the morning. Yes. Today we're, uh, we've been allowed to come into what I consider kind of a, a little piece of racing royalty here. This is a, a renowned race shop owned by Jim Downing. Jim Downing being one of the uh, first drivers, I would say, to have realized the potential for a rotary powered race car in the early IMSA RS series, the RX2s, RX3s, and RX7s, and prototypes, and so forth, and win five championships in IMSA. And if that's not enough for a career, Jim is also the guy who, who I guess, co-invented the Hans device with his brother-in-law, Bob Hubbard, uh, this being an early one, this being a late one. So thank you so much for getting up on this pretty crappy well, morning. Well, you're welcome. Let's give Bob most of the credit for the invention. Really? He likes to say, I asked the question, he, he answered it, and then I built them, and, and, uh, and we ran the business out of, out of this building. So, all right, you know what? We're going off track, but I, I love the story. Tell us about how this came to be. I was in a bad accident in 80, and then Patrick Jacquemart was killed in mid-Ohio of a basilar skull fracture. Bob likes to say, I ask how we prevent this. He's being a biomechanical engineer. He came up with the idea, and it evolved and evolved and evolved and evolved. And today, then we have something like this out of the very first one, which was, was like, like this. And, uh, now it's pretty universally uh, used by everybody with any sense. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> How many of these do you figure out in the world right now? Do you have any idea? Uh, we think they're around 250,000. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Before the cameras were on, Jim told me that his father had a dealership. And tell me about that. You and Dad used to go out looking? Yeah, when I was... Uh, this is the late 40s and early 50s. My dad would go out on Sunday afternoons hunting old cars. I remember we, we, he's, he bought a couple of cords out of backyards of people he had, he had heard about. So I grew up around it and, you know, uh, I'm still doing it. <laughs> so. Isn't that something? So we, we, you know, we think Barn Fund Hunt is a new concept. It ain't. I've always thought of this as being what a, a real sports car was. Uh, this is a 46. Uh, I, I, I was driving a 49 in high school. So and this is, I guess, the, the minimalist sports car. Yeah. Yeah, there's not much to a Lotus 7. A Lotus 7 was built by a guy named Colin Chapman. It's kind of like a four-wheel motorcycle. It's, what does it weigh? Uh, probably 1,100 pounds. 1,100 pounds. I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I think. This is a 67 Cosmo. It has their first rotary engine and was never sold in this country by the factory. And it's just amazing that a Japanese car in the mid-60s looks like this. You this know. is not restored? No, it, no. This, is a, this, is a, this was a street car. And That's a metal body? Yeah. So, 67, so this was well before Mazda made an entry in the United States. Yeah, they didn't come in until 69. A du chevaux. So this was a car built in France by Citroën that when it was designed, it had to have the ability to drive across a freshly plowed farm field with a basket of eggs on the front seat and without breaking an egg. So that's how compliant the suspension is on this. And maybe with a goat in the backside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. So I, I'm looking at, is that a, a sign from Road Atlanta or a replica? That is the original sign from Road Atlanta. Larry West, who we think did the original sign at Road Atlanta, came over and went over it 
so that it is it's exactly like it like it was. Did you race in it? Yes, I did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I could spend an hour look just looking at the walls. This was done by a, a doctor up in Milwaukee. It's the same thing. This is a 95. A three rotor imported from Japan was put in this one. And it has about 450 horsepower. You spin the wheels at 60 miles an hour. And <laughs> this is the show car. Uh -huh. okay. it's, it's not a real car. They built three cars that were supposed to race. Well, the third car was never really finished. That's it. Right there. <laughs> Wow. We're, we're restoring it and building the parts that weren't quite finished. That's a four rotor car. Yeah. And natural aspirated, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So these are what you cut your teeth in the rotary world with, I guess, right? Yes. Uh, this is a 78 uh, RX3 that ran in the Champion Spark Plug Series in IMSA and won the championship in 81 with it. But the famous car is that one. That's the very first Mazda factory effort in this country. 78, 24 hours at Daytona. I got this back about 12 years ago and started restoring it. So right-hand drive, did you build it here right-hand drive? No, this this how it from the factory. So it was already built as a race car? Yeah. Wow. So this was one that was never finished? Some parts missing and but, you know, we know who the original suppliers were. We have all the original drawings from Dykstra, so it's being finished the way Dykstra designed it. But uh, this, uh, this will be a high-end car, because, you know, it's just gorgeous. This is the prettiest thing I've ever seen. This is the motor right here. So this, this is a four-rotor engine, and does, it has, it's fuel-injected, but naturally aspirated, I guess, right? This is, this is the 78. This was the fancy one that had all the stripes and everything. We've been sort of gradually restoring it. Quicker car and specialty uh, parts to it. It's uh, hard to find now. That's a neat car. When they developed this, a car like this, an RX2, RX3, they were the size of a Datsun 510, the size of a Pinto, the size of a Toyota Corolla. They got a bad name for themselves because the, the gas mileage was not as good as those other cars I just named. But really, these cars were like V8 powered, weren't they? Right. That I mean, no gas mileage. This was a this was a hot rod. I mean, you get power for for using some gas, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you're looking at as an economy car, get a get a Nissan. You know, that's that's not the point. The barn find that uh, that, that originally sparked all this is that car. This car. That's the Inter American challenge car that was in the Miami street races in 86. They ran that as a Mazda, you know, support. It was a support celebrity event. Okay, so there was a number of cars identically prepared type thing? There were 16 in that. Really? They, they, ran, they ran that program uh, for at least three years I know of, 84, 85, and 86. I, I got to be one of the drivers in, in 86. Although, I have no idea what car that was in. This showed up on eBay uh, about 12 or 14 years ago, and I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> and we've sort of gradually been collecting pieces and stuff to put it back together. It's got the original roll cage, and uh, it had the big Mazda stickers on it. And so that's a second generation RX-7. So this is exactly what I was hoping to find on this trip with cars like this. Huh. So, another Do Chevaux, is this a parts car or is this another project? It's a project car. It's an 84. It's quite a late one. So you can see this has got a two-cylinder, horizontally opposed. One cylinder here and one cylinder on the other side. It's got disc brakes, which is kind of uh, funny, but the disc brakes are, are inboard, transmission, engines hanging out the front. If you go to Europe, if you go to France, you see these every day all over the place. You look at these shelves here, I think these shelves could, could be a museum in themselves, but those are molds for race car bodies uh, for the cars that he used to race in IMSA. 
uh, the kudzus and GTO cars. So another second generation RX-7. This was kind of the bulbous one. If you remember the early RX-7, first generation, was uh, a nice tight little car that I think sold for $59.95 starting point. This was the second generation, it got a little bit fat. The third gen, which was the twin rotor car like we saw inside, uh, huh, were svelte, lightweight, and purpose-built, fast, and handled great. Not an ounce of, uh, it, it was all muscle, not an ounce of fat on it. That's an ITA car, that was not your, one of your cars, I think. No, I belonged to Chuck Ulinski, who was a Mazda, Mazda racer in the RX-3 and RX-2 days. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's some sentimental value to, to us, and, uh, and we, there's a group of Mazda people in the U.S. that really, really follow rotaries, and uh, so we get something that has a little history to it, we buy it. Are these parts cars, are they future project cars in the back here? Yeah, they're parts cars or right. either one. Yeah, I understand. You know, it just depends. You see, if you find one and it's reasonably priced, you snap it up? Yeah. Well, Jim, thanks for inviting us to your little uh, piece of rotary uh, utopia here. Thank well, you. Well, thanks for coming. That was fun. Thank you. Rain has let up, thankfully. We're hope, hope, hopefully it won't even come back. We're north of Atlanta and we're driving to see some Datsun Z cars. So come along for the ride. this many in one spot in a long time. Our plan to come to Atlanta and see kind of newer classic cars and meet younger enthusiasts, younger car collectors and restorers, that has led us to meet Max and Clay, who have a business called Resurrected Classics, and they specialize in the restoration of Datsun Z cars. Now these guys are college students, and they cut out a class today to meet us here. So you guys are the, the future. Like, when, you know, like I'm gonna fart away someday, and, and you guys are the future. So tell us, what do you do here? How long have you been yeah. in business? So we've been doing this probably since about 2017. Um, we started with just one car. I, I, he's my roommate, actually. I talked him into going in on, on some cars with me because um, I was a car guy, you know, I was trying to get him to be a car guy too. And so we start with one car, we paid $400 for. A Z car? Yeah, it was a Z car, it was a uh, 74 260Z. Um, brought it back, um, you know, fixed it up and sold it. You know for I mean? how much? Uh, 3000 Okay. So, yeah. Um, so we thought it was pretty good, you know, and. We were pretty young, so there's not very many good jobs when you're young, you know, that make good pay, so that's pretty good for us. We just kind of started from there, you know, in a barn. So now how many Datsuns do you have now? I think we have about um, 20 in inventory, then about 20 in parts, part cars. Wow. And it's like all Zs from the earliest 240s to, to 280 to go beyond that? Yeah, we, we mainly specialize in, in 70 to 78. Um, we do have a couple of ZX, like this is an 81. Yep. Um, but the deadline, you know, totally is about uh, 83. So do you have do you have anything like the, the first gen 240, uh, you know, 1969, 70, anything like that? Yeah, we've actually got. Um, it's probably the most rare we have, but we have a 70 dots, and that's VIN number 598. So the 598Z car built. Now I, there are collectors now that are looking for early edition 240Zs. Yeah, that's kind of what we were you know looking for also uh-huh so did you guys pick these up onesie twosie or did you buy a collection or what i was actually on like a, a Datsun forum and i saw somebody he said hey i have a couple of Datsuns, you know and i've got number 598 you know and i was like wow you know so I, I immediately called him up and i you know i told him i was like man you know we need to get down there you know because that's something that's not going to last long where was it that was in, in macon georgia about an hour away from where we go to school so we got right in the car, heading down there and checked it out. So it was a pretty solid car? Yeah, it's not bad. Um, it's had one repaint. You can tell it's got a clear yeah, coat. Yeah. So as, if I'm not mistaken, I used to have it 71. The early, the first editions had 240 here. And instead of having the vents here, it has them back here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, like if you look at this one right here on your left, so that's circular. Yep. Um, and then they changed that. But also for cars that are like much earlier, like 
it gets really specific, you know, really nitty gritty. Um, but like this Z is this silver, whereas like a, a normal 70, it'll look like that, but it'll be like white. And that's like a, they call it like a 69 oh, yeah. specific thing. But this is, it's close to a 69. It's like a one of 70. So we just barely um, didn't make it. But yeah. if you notice, um, the rear hatch glass has no um, defrost. Right, and some had oh, vertical and some had horizontal, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, exactly. Defroster. There's no defroster back here. Uh, I guess in Japan they didn't need it, and in the United States they didn't require it yet. If you, if you look at this ID tag up here, HLS30-00598, so that's the 598th Datsun Z car built. So it still has drivetrain in there, engine transmission? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's super original. Um, Oh yeah. And it's not in too bad a shape. It's got all the hard to find parts that you'd want to have, like the, um, the air filter doesn't have a, uh, they have like a little flapper, yeah. yep. summer winter flapper. Mm -hmm. The valve cover says 2400 cc, when oh, it would normally yeah. just say Nissan OHC. Mm -hmm. um, it's small stuff like that, but it, it means a lot to a collector. So how many miles are on something like this? It's probably a lot, oh, yeah. well over 100? Yeah, probably something like that. Um, yeah, so you can see. Yeah, and if you notice um, the floors, uh, they have like a kind of like a uh, undercoating. Oh yeah. Um, they didn't put carpet. That was what they did. So these are really they didn't early. Put carpet in the cars? No, not yet. Um, they had rubber mats. Yeah, because when they were making these cars, they weren't sure. They were kind of tweaking things, like the defrosters. They didn't know if they needed that or not. So they made a lot of changes. So that's a that's a '69 specific part. So it looks like 83,000 miles. Could that be 83? Could it be 183? Um. You know, I, I think of 83,000, um, that could be a stretch, but 183 seems like a lot to me, you know, and this car isn't really in that bad of shape. I mean, the back, uh, you know, this area rusts out a lot. So this is uh, destined for a full restoration? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this one is, um, we've only had this car for about a year or so, so uh -huh. we haven't had it very long. So that's all original paint back here? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and you can tell they didn't even put undercoating yet. Yep. So there's a lot of small changes in these cars. Oh, this has collapsed down there like that. Um, that's that, that's kind of how they're designed. There's supposed to be a cardboard insert that uh -huh. goes over that. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, because if you look at the spot welds, it goes to like the, yep. and with the wheel well. What would something like this in restored condition be worth? Um, I mean, if it was really, you know, meticulously restored, um, I would think anywhere from 50 to 60,000. No kidding. You know, and it's it's hard to kind of get a good price for because there's just not very many. I mean, for what they call series ones, um, like 70s or early 71 or late 71s, with the hatch vents, probably like 10,000. So this is January 70. So they were just back from Christmas vacation. Yeah. And they built this car. Yeah, yeah, I get it. So could we just unwrap some of these cars and see what you got here? Fair Lady. So that was a non-import car. Yeah. So in in Japan, these were called Fair Ladies. Um, Interesting. What year is this? It's a 77. So it's a 280? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 280Z. So they're factory bumpers, because in Japan they didn't have to change. And so you could see Fairlady Zs would have, you know, what we would call 240 bumpers, but that was, you know, factory for them, so. Got it. Oh, that's pretty cool. So that's another restoration project. Now, yeah. you're restoring these for yourselves, you're restoring them to sell. How does that work? A little bit of both. You know, there's some that we want to do ourselves. We know we can't get to all of them. All right, so what else you got here? It's a roller, so it's got no drivetrain. Yeah. Um, but it's in, you know, pretty solid shape. So is that the price you're asking or the price you bought it for? Uh, that's, that's the price, uh, a little more than the price I bought it for. So, yep. yeah, I got, I got pretty fortunate. But this is a car that, um, really solid example, and we're going to do a, an LS swap with this one. Ah, jeez. So. Yeah. so, yeah, we decided we've done a lot of factory stuff, a lot of original stuff. We wanted to do one that's, you know, fast and fun and... Now, do you have to do anything with the, with kind of the, the body to reinforce it for that kind um, of torque or anything? It's pretty, uh, it's pretty solid down there. Yeah, there's probably some things that will add to it, but overall, it doesn't take you know too much modification. That, that's such a big area. You could put one in there. Oh uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Man, this is uh, a project that we're um, probably gonna sell. So sell the way it is. Yeah. It is somewhat rough, but it's it's really original. Um, I and mean, it's getting harder and harder to find 240Zs. It just really is. 
It used to be, when I was restoring my car, you couldn't get a steel quarter panel repair kit, but you can now, I guess? Yeah, well, you can't get an entire quarter. Um, they don't make those anymore. What we can get is like a wheel well kit. Yeah, yeah. And it goes from about right here to there, down to that dog leg. Um, and that's really probably all you need. Well, yeah, I had to put a, a fiberglass fender repair kit. And, yeah. you know, no matter how good you do it, there's always a crack that starts. And... Yeah, especially with fiberglass to metal, I think it, yeah. it's difficult. All right, what else we got here? This is a um, 78 uh, 280Z that we bought. Um, it's almost a one owner car. Wow. It was owned by an old lady in, in Alabama. Um, mm. And it's been garaged a lot of its life. Uh, you can tell that because, I mean, it's a southeastern car and it's not rusty, so it, there's no way it can be outside. So if you remember the, the, the 280Z we saw over there, the orange car, had a little bumper. That, that's a Japanese bumper. And here's the U.S. mandated five mile an hour bumper on a U.S. 280Z. It's got the, a stripe kit on there. Is this low mileage? 99,000. 99,000. And I believe that's original miles. Wow, it's quite a lineup here. And last but not least, what is this? I think it's a 1970. Yeah. Another 70? Yeah. Are you kidding me? You have two 70s? We've got two or three, I think. There's one more in there, one in there, and then one out back, or maybe not. It's like four. I, I, we'll wow. have to add it up again. So as I remember, that was the first year they were available in the States. Yeah, that's true. So, okay, so I could see that the emblem was here. It's got the vents in the back. Mm -hmm. And so what, what do you do with something like this? Well, our first plan is to get rid of the sunroof. Because that was probably back in the day, but it's just not anymore. So that'd be probably the hardest task. Um, and then just rough repair. So you, know? you have parts cars you can cut the roof off and put a new one in? Yeah. So if somebody watches this show, and I mean, I'd like to buy that project car or whatever, you're open to that? Yeah. Yeah. Basically anything is for sale. That's a salesman. <laughs> we have um, some of our parts, like our more kind of precious parts we'll store in here, like we've got um, early, you know, so those are the parts. early D hubcaps, like a 70? Yeah. Oh, no yeah, so those we've got... Those things were rare 30 years ago. Really? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that. Um, yeah. So we've got about two stacks of them. And these are, um, these are like 69 hubcaps. Right. You can tell by the teeth. You see there's only a couple of teeth and look, you know. Oh, yeah. So that's like, you know, early, early. Yeah, a lot of people would just throw the hubcaps away. I know. You know, that's why they're rare today. Oh. So is this... Uh, a customer car, your car? Yeah, it's a customer car. Customer, so you're doing on. a restoration on a customer car? Yeah, yeah, we did the full pans and now we're doing the paint that we're gonna put the engine in and get it running and driving. It's an orange car? So. Yeah, it's like, or it's like a persimmon yeah, yeah, color, yeah. you know? And you have just about every part? Oh, look at that, wow, bumpers, doors. Yeah. So if somebody needs a transmission, like, you know, this is the place to come. Yeah, you yeah. got four speeds, some five speeds, um, a few automatics. Some of the earlier transmissions, like 70s, had different transmissions. They had like a, a straight shifter. Do you powder coat these? Yeah, uh, we have a, a place that we use. Um, this engine just kind of got like a little refreshed and resealed. Not any machine work, um, but just, yeah, the customer wanted just to, you know, make sure there's no like leaks like that, remain seal, you know, front, you know, timing cover seal, all the stuff like that. Well, it sure looks pretty. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of dusty now, but everything's all you know ceramic coated mm -hmm. on the hot stuff. Well, somehow I have a feeling Clay and Max, we haven't seen the last of them, and I think you know you're going to be able to see online these guys probably once graduation happens from college in May, you can start seeing these guys popping up now and then about reproducing parts, restoring cars, uh, bringing cars to shows magazine stories, whatever. So man, thanks thanks for coming out of school early man, today. I appreciate it. Just tell your teacher to give me a, you know, <laughs> give me a shout, I'll write you a note. It's a wrap. That was a refreshing stop. The task of coming down to this area was to find cars that would appeal to youthful enthusiasts. And what we did was find cars that appealed to youthful enthusiasts and a business that's run by youthful enthusiasts. I mean, like, perfect. This is this is where our uh, hobby's going uh, is to to younger enthusiasts who are going to take it, carry it forward. And it's not going to be working on 1939 Fords. It's going to be working on 240Z Datsuns. So, I'm really encouraging to see what Max and Clay are doing there. And I, I think we're going to see them in the future doing great things.